Now, let's define complex power. Give it the letter S. Well, if it's a complex value, it has a real value, we'll call it P. It has an imaginary value, we'll call it Q. An example, graphically, let's look at it graphically. If this is S, and this is theta here, P is the real portion. That's this one. This is what P is. And that's your Q. So P is actually S times cosine theta. Hmm. Okay. Let's talk about S first. So we know P, average power, Let's come back to it. Is what? V max, I sub max, cosine, and let's call this angle theta, which is really theta V minus, let's call this theta V minus theta I, but I'll call it theta for now. The complex power S can be found by taking V effective times I effective conjugate. That's your complex power. And this angle is really theta V minus theta I. I just call it theta. So to find P using trig, using geometry, what is P? P is going to be whatever S, which is V effective, times what? I effective conjugate times cosine theta V minus theta I. Hey, wait a minute. What is that? That looks familiar. Isn't that the average power, the equation for the average power? V effective, I effective. So, well, but this is conjugate. The other one is not a conjugate. Well, big deal. Watch this. If I, if V effective, I'll just use some numbers, equals four angle zero. And let's say I effective equals three angle 90. What's the conjugate of that? I effective conjugate will be what? Three angle negative 90. So what's the average power? Isn't that 4 times 3, we take the values, times cosine theta v, theta v is what? 0 minus theta i, which is 90. Doesn't matter if it's effective conjugate or not, because that conjugate has no effect on these numbers. That's 4 times. It doesn't change the 3. It just changes the angle. So that is your average power. And the units for that is what? The units for complex power should be what? VA. That's apparent power. Is this supposed to be a one half in the P average equation? Uh, no, if I use the effective value. Oh, the one on top of that one? Yeah, oh yeah, that's, I meant, I'm good, good. yeah, one half if I use the maximum value, or I meant to write it in terms of uh, RMS, IRMS, cosine theta, which is theta V minus theta I. So that's really what the average power is, this piece right here. So this is your average power in watts. Q actually, so P is the average power. So S is the apparent power or complex power. P is the average power. And Q is called the reactive power. Let me put on a clean sheet. So 
So S is the complex power. which equal V effective, calculate that, times I effective conjugate. P, it is the average power. And the unit for that is W. Q, we call that, that's the imaginary power, the reactive power. And the units for that, for reactive powers, because you know for S is going to be VA, the units. And this is reactive power, so we can use VA. It's really volt, ampere, but we call it reactive, the complex portion. So the units for that is VAR, V-A-R, volt, ampere, reactive. VAR. The units for Q is VAR. And if you want to calculate the value of Q using geometry, Q is equal to what? It's V effective, I effective, times the sine, the sine of theta V minus theta I. And P is V effective I effective cosine theta V minus theta I. Geometry. So what happened to the conjugate? Again, we're talking about the magnitude of that number. Doesn't matter what the angle is, conjugate or not, that doesn't change the magnitude. And the apparent power if you want to be correct there, it's not really S, it's, it's the magnitude of S. The norm in complex. You take the, the magnitude of that, which is V effective times I effective. The magnitude of that. So S you know, when you look at it, it looks like complex power because that's conjugate. This is not, but if you take the magnitude of that, the magnitude of this, the magnitude of that is the same thing. That's what that parent power. And the units for that is VA. VAR. This is watts. Let's take an example and see how we're going to deal with that. Do we have one here? Yep, there's an example. Talks about customers like us, factory, could be the Basketball Hall of Fame. It says we have industrial consumer, and that means a company here, a big, big place factory. It has two loads. It looks like they connected in parallel. Load S1 and load S2. Well, what happens actually, this is the motor they're using. They found out they're losing a lot of power. You'll see that later in the course to correct a power factor, we take a capacitor, put it in parallel with this to bring the power factor to a better number. So this is, we're not going to tell you what that is now, but corrective device to make the power factor a little bit nicer. The basketball has that issue. When they built the basketball Hall of Fame, somebody said to me, I forgot how many thousand feet of cable going through it, thousands of miles, not even feet of cables going through the Basketball Hall of Fame. So the power factor was not really good, so I had to bring in a big capacitor, put it in parallel with the load 
to bring that power factor to a better number. Oh, wait, see, so you like to engineer on the side? Or? Not me, but uh, they have people, their own people doing it. They can correct that to get the power factor. To, you'll see, we'll do that in the class. Like if you have a load that, if I didn't have this and you're getting 70% of the power, 60% power factor, you said, what value of capacitor can I put there to bring the power factor to 85% now? So by putting that capacitor in parallel with this, and what's happening basically, you get this load here. It might be 50 plus uh, 40J, plus 40J. If I can lower that 40J, it's plus 40J. How you lower the plus 40J? You need something to subtract from it. So if I can take a capacitor now, which has a negative J that will lo lower that, instead of 50 plus 40J, now the whole thing becomes 50 plus 10J, I just improve the power factor by a huge margin. Yeah. There are some people that should do that for a living. If you decide to go into if electrical engineering, once you branch, you go to the third year, fourth year, some of the options you can go into communications if you like to work on radars. You can do power factor or power supply, you know, which is power engineering, power electronic, and I did a lot of power electronic. I had a guy, actually a teacher at WPI who won the Nobel Prize in power electronics, so it was fascinating. I took some of his classes because I enjoyed the class. So, but that's one thing you can do. You can do also computers, either hardware or software. You can do a combination of both, you know. But you'll have to make a decision like in third year, toward the end of the third year, which direction you want to go, you know. A couple of my friends actually work on radars. They work on submarines. Yeah. Uh, they work on the carriers for the military where the radar is not working. They go and fix it. One of them, actually, Mark Zingarelli, was one of my students here. And he works on the submarine. And the radar goes, they come fly him. He's in New London. They'll fly him in. They land him on a carrier. Put him on the F-15. You watch them. And they come and hit the cable. If the radar is messed up, he has to climb the ship up there and look at it, take it apart, bring it down, fix it, put it back up there. You know. So he goes, I've flown on many of these flights in the middle of the ocean where they've got to grab that rope there and put you there so you can get off the plane now and go fix that radar for them. So that's part of the electrical engineering jobs you can do. Or you can sit in the office and design things on paper, which is nice and safe. <laughs> you know? You don't get motion sickness, nothing. So in this example, uh, is operating. So this power factor, I'm assuming the motor one, is operating at 50 kilowatts. Notice the units. 50 kilowatts. I mean, in parentheses, they put this is 67.1 horsepower motor. We don't care about that number. 67.1 horsepower. So it's a big one. Uh, it's not a small like water uh, pump for the pool. The pool is like half a horsepower. This is actually a good size motor there. It has a power factor lagging. Power factor equals 0.8 lagging. I just add LAG for lagging. The voltage cross at the source voltage here, V, is 230. Notice they didn't give me the angle. If they don't give you the angle, they assume to be zero. RMS. Here's the statement. In order to obtain lower electric rates, the consumer wishes to raise the power factor to 0.95. So they take this device, attach it, so at the end the power factor for both of these combined becomes 0.95 and it's lagging. And the question, what should we put here? I think that's what they're looking for. What should we attach here to make the power factor 0.95 lagging? Let's look at the two sources assigned current. This is I going in. This is I sub 1. This is I sub 2. Let's look at source one. What do we know about source one? We know the average power, that's P, for source one is 50. 
He said, how do you know it's P? It's not S. How do we know that? Because it's in watts. In watts, that's all correct. That's kilowatts, so 1,000 watts. 50,000 or 50K. The units tell me that's the average power. I also know from the power factor, which is cosine theta V minus theta I. That's 0.8. Can we find what theta V minus theta I? Isn't that the inverse cosine? Inverse cosine, second cosine, 0.8. Roughly 37 degrees. So this is what I know. S1. I can tell you what S1 in a minute. I know this angle is 30, positive 37 degrees. It's lag and power factor, positive. I know this value here is what? 50,000 or 50K. Can I find S here? That number? Or can I find this imaginary value? Q. What's tangent 37? It's the opposite over the adjacent. Can I get what Q is? Q1 for source 1. Let's call this is P1 for source one, you know. Tangent 37 times 50,000. And it's 37677. So roughly what, 38K? If you want to round it, or 37.7K? Kilovar, the units for that. 37.7. So I know what the complex power for the first one. I know what S1 now. The complex power, remember, is P plus Q. S1 equals... P1 plus Q1. We know P1 is 50,000. 50K plus 37.7K. There's a J here. That's S1. That's the complex power for source 1. Okay, let's look at the combined load. This is for source one, combined load. The voltage didn't change. Corrective device. Most likely that corrective device, a capacitor or an inductor, so it's not gonna affect the 50 kilowatts. That doesn't change it. So P is going to be the 50 kilowatts again. C for combine. We also know what? The power factor is 0.95. Power factor for the combine equals what? Cosine theta V minus theta I. 0.95 equals cosine theta V minus theta I. 
What's the inverse cosine of 0.95? Eighteen degrees, roughly. So here's what I know for the combined. As for the combined, I didn't get it yet. This is now 18 degrees. I know the real portion to be what? What's the real portion? 50K. This is P, the combined. Can we get Q for the combined? Tangent again. Yep. Yep. So tangent 18 times 50K equals Q for the combined. Tangent 18 times the 50,000, which is 16,245. Two decimal places, about 16.2 kilowatts. Uh, var, not watts. Kilovar. That's a complex reactive portion. So I know now what S combine. So this is what I know. S for the first load is 50K plus J 37.7K. S combined is 50K plus J what? What was that number? 16.2. S2 is unknown. I'm looking for it. Because I have no idea what we're putting there. I'm, S combined is going to be this plus S1 plus S2. So S combined is S1 plus S2. Yep. Are you adding the imaginary real to the real imaginary to imaginary? So this one is what? 50K. Oh, I mean for, yeah, you're just adding the complex power of each one. Plus J, 116.2K. Equals S1, which is 50K, plus J37.7K, K plus S2. What happens to the Ks? They cancel each other out, and that tells me S2 has to be a negative, negative, negative what? What is 16.2 minus 37.7? 21.7. Twenty-one point five k. That's j. It's a negative value. Okay. We know what the complex power of through this one. It's negative. 21.5. Okay. Well, what's complex power equal to? Complex power equals what? V effective times I effective conjugate. For load 2, what's the voltage? 60? What was the, oh, no, what's a different problem? What was it 230? So a negative. We'll take the magnitude of that in a minute there. E equals what? V effective, which is 230, times what? 
I effective conjugate. That's a K, I forgot the K here. So let's take that number, make it 21.5K, that's 21,500 divided by what, 230? Is that a 93 roughly? Negative 93J. I2 equals conjugate here. Negative 93 So what's I sub 2, not the conjugate? Or that's negative J, right? Negative 93J. So the conjugate, what that means to you, it's 93 angle what? Negative 270. The conjugate is actually becomes the plus 9 because you're going to take the conjugate of that number. You switch the minus j to a plus j, which is what? Positive 93j, which is 93 angle what? 90 degrees. And that's not the conjugate, the other one. That's, yep, that's the conjugate. This is not the conjugate. Okay. Because you're going to multiply by the conjugate, you multiply the top bottom by j, you know? Mm -hmm. Negative j will make, you know. So now, this is what the current is. The question is, what do we need to put there? We know the voltage, we know the current. Can we figure out what Z is? Remember, go in there, we know the voltage here, we know the current through it. Can you get the impedance of that one? So the last piece is, what is the impedance? We know V equals I times Z. We know the voltage is 230 angle zero. We know the current through it, we just calculated that, 93 angle 90. Can we get what Z is? What is Z equal to? Uh, 230 divided by 93, 2.5 roughly angle negative 90, which is what? Negative 90, that means what? Is that negative J? So it's a capacitor. negative J. So we have to put a capacitor there that will give me a value for it of negative 2.5 J to take that power factor and change it now from whatever it was before. I forgot what that number was, 60 or 80 percent to 95 percent. That's always the case. That's what you do all the time. You take a power capacitor and put it in parallel to bring in that power factor up there. And that will make it worse. Okay. Yep, power factor worse. But if you were running something that had a large number of caps in it, or I can the re was yeah. you were running power factor, the, re the reason graphically, I'll show you the reason graphically. Inductor has a positive value of J, and you're going to be adding the two of them. So let's say this is the first one. This is S for the first one. If you put an inductor, the inductor has a positive J. It will look something like this. So when you add these two vectors, how do you add them graphically? You go like this. Then from here, you do the next vector, right? And look what happened to the result now. You know, it went up. Look at a Q. It got bigger. On the other hand, when you put a capacitor, Let's say this is the first one. Capacitor has a negative J. You're adding this to it. Let's do it graphically. You go like this. And what happened to that Q value? It gets smaller. So that's what you're trying to do. Try to make that imaginary value, that Q less. So that's why you want the capacitor, because this has a positive one here. So to get rid of it, you need actually a vector pointing down, not going up. If it's going up, you're making the imaginary value bigger and bigger, which is worse and worse.